It's 12 o'clock noon on Wednesday, which means it's time for Rip It Live on Facebook, where we talk about all things softball, including college recruiting, high school happenings, and the latest in Rip It equipment and paraphernalia, so, you can, so we can educate you, the softball community, to make the best decisions possible. And you can see why more parents, players, and coaches are turning to the Rip It brand for their softball needs. I'm your host, Wes Pollock, and we have another great show today. Joining us today on the show will be Kaylee Chappelle. Kaylee was one of my original Wildfire 1.0 uh, players on my travel team. She was a standout catcher during her time on my Wildfire team, and she had a long and successful career as both a high school as well as a travel ball player. Kaylee went on to be the first Wildfire 1.0 18U version uh, college recruit, and when she went to Division I South Carolina Upstate Spartans. As well, Kaylee also played for Division I Florida Gulf Coast Eagles before deciding to become a student at the same Florida Gulf Coast University. Kaylee is here to share some of her thoughts and experiences about playing high-level collegiate softball, and she will also discuss her origins in the game and what made her so passionate about playing softball. She will she also discuss with us about her life after softball and the transition and shift from being a student athlete to a student and then ultimately a college graduate. Kaylee will share with us life lessons that she has learned and the important takeaways she was able to get from a sport she grew up loving to play. Life after softball and the shift from college student athlete to college student to college graduate with a focus on a new perspective on life and her aspiring career going forward today on Rip It Live on Facebook. But before we get to Kaylee, we have our product giveaway announcements. Last week's product winner of the $50 Rip It gift certificate is Keisha Baker Williams. Keisha Baker Williams is the recipient of the $50 Rip It gift certificate. Congratulations, Keisha. Keisha. This week's product giveaway will be the same $50 gift ticket from Rip It, and you, get, you can uh, cash that out at ripit.com is one of the venues. Here's how you win. Share the video, tag a parent or coach, and please make sure it is public. If we can't see it, you can't win, so it's important to make it public when you tag and share the video. You can't win otherwise. Our, our winner will be announced in next week's Rip It Live show on Facebook. All right, so let's get back. Uh, to also the newest member of our Rippet family. That would be the White Oak Lady Necks team. Uh, they purchased a group of Rippet uniforms. So the White Oak Lady Neck uh, travel team produced a, a, mount, a large amount of Rippet uniforms and we want to welcome you to the family. They look awesome. So congratulations, all right? And if again, you're just joining us, please comment, share, tag, video, make it public. Chance to win a $50 gift certificate, $50 gift certificate for Rip It um, to be used on ripit.com. Uh, and uh, we'll get on now with our show and our discussion with Kaylee Chappelle. Thanks for joining us, Kaylee. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, okay, Kaylee, take us back a little bit to your origins of playing softball. What drove, you know, drove you to play maybe the little leaguer and all the way through was what was about that triggered you that you wanted to play softball? Um, I think it was majority to do with my parents, um, kind of inspired by them. My mom played softball in high school and was her high school softball star. She was a pitcher and so I think it really goes back to them and um, them pushing me and uh, I tried a couple different sports but softball was where my passion was. Okay. Um, you were a catcher. Mm -hmm. It's a tough position. Um, what drove you to become a catcher? What was, what was the attraction? I actually was a pitcher to start and my dad wanted me to push, was the pusher to be the catcher, and I really hated it, and then learned to love it, and I just loved being the leader, I loved being like kind of the controller of the game back there, right. and so I think that's what kept me and drove me, and I liked it. Well, no doubt pitchers and catchers, yeah. you know, tend to control the game, so you were doing both, so that should right. speak to <laughs> your, yeah, your excitement, but you like to control the game. Um, you also played high school softball. Yeah. And how important was that to you? Uh, growing up, you know, you kind of moved through the phases of life, and that was like my first really big phase was being the elite athlete. Uh, the goal was to be varsity as a freshman and then continue varsity through all four years, and that's what ended up happening. And so that was like a big milestone in my life, and uh, I loved the high school softball years. It was so fun. Um, it was just kind of a get away from the tra the intense travel ball, but I enjoyed both sides of it. I really liked high school. And you had a one special year run in high school. Tell yeah. us the audience a little bit about that. 
So my senior year, we actually won the state championship, and that was unbelievable. It was awesome. Um, got a ring from that, and that was really great. Um, my team was awesome. It was great to be a part of something like that. That was my probably my next huge milestone, mm -hmm. um, aside from committing to play further on. But that was really great. It was awesome. Um, I don't know. I can't. It was an experience that is unbelievable. I sure. loved it. Um, and that was Forest. Yes, Forest Ocala. High School. Forest High School out of Ocala. So there's a shout out to Forest, right? Go Ocala. Oh, well, uh, yes, there you go. <laughs> um, what What do you feel that high school taught you over the years playing? Um, I don't really. Balance academics, you know, athletics. Yeah, um, preparing for college. Yeah, like I would say it definitely did prepare as far as time management. You know, travel ball is typically more geared towards the summer and so you're not balancing as much. Um, mm -hmm. So high school definitely did prepare me uh, as far as balancing academics, balancing uh, athletics. Um, it kind of gave me an inside look at what college would be like as right. far as that perspective. Okay. Um, shifting to travel ball. Let's, let's talk a little bit about your travel ball career and take us through that process and uh, how that worked out and ultimately in your uh, ultimate commitment. To, okay. to to college. Um, I think my best transition was definitely coming to Wildfire and I played for, for you for what, seven years or yeah. something like yeah, that. Was really well, yeah. So that was a long run. Um, that was my best decision. We all, were always a great competitive team and that's what I loved. And ultimately I think uh, the name on the front of the jersey and just how competitive and good we were was what got me to where I ended up. Right. I think that has a huge part to do in it. It's not just your talent. It's about who you're with and you know how great your teammates are right um yeah i mean as part of the process it's you know i always said it's the name on the front of the jersey Not the as a coach i always tell players the name on the front of your jersey means more than the name on the back of the jersey yeah and if I you buy into agree. that philosophy you'll understand um how tell us through the recruiting and commitment process how, how did that work out you were our first one yeah well i first uh, from original team who got committed which is kind of exciting that is exciting to have you back here today um Tell us a little bit about that, how that commitment went. It's definitely stressful, but um, I think putting the stress aside, it has to do with not so much, you're kind of selling yourself. The team sells you, the name on the front sells you. you you're kind of selling yourself, you, you don't have to think about it, it's your talents sell them. Right. You're not out there. Uh, having interviews or anything like that. It's it's about your talent and how you how you function as a team and how you get along with your teammates and your charisma and things of that nature. It's right. a lot goes into it. You think about it. It's not oh she's a great athlete, but you they really consider how you handle yourself and your mannerisms and um, how you get along with people and they watch all of that. And I think it's a huge huge part that kind of gets overlooked. Right. No, I, I tell the players again, getting out of the car in the parking lot before yeah. a tournament starts then, right? Yeah, you know, it really does. Until you get does. back in the car. It really does. Now, once you you were committed, how did that change your attitude and approach to playing softball once you were college committed? Um, I don't necessarily think it was like a... Uh, ch it doesn't change to like a more of a selfish side because right. you do still have 15-ish other girls that you're... You're, you still have to promote and play for them as well. You know, without without them, I would have never been committed. And without me, they they don't get commitments. So I think it's definitely a team, how cliche to say, but a teamwork effort. Um, but I don't know. I, so it just basically it raises your game. Yeah. You know, you obviously, you're, there's more focus and. You know, and, but again, you're still playing as one as part of a team. Right. When you're right. at that point, you're not. It's more of like a. You're, when you get to that commitment level and you, you're settled in and you know where you're going, it's more of like a perfecting stage. I would say That's you're good, you're yeah, fine tuning your skills and um, things like that. Um, yeah, because I think, like I said, I think there's a pressure taken off once you get committed. Absolutely. But then there's sort of a new, like you said, new right. phase that you enter, which is more perfection. Right. Upping your maturity levels, uh, professionalism. Yeah. I wouldn't say um, that yeah. any you don't lay off at all. Well, I you would can't say, put your feet up. You can't yeah, put your feet up I would definitely say up. you yeah. work harder, if anything. Right. 
to get to that next level. Right. And I would tell my kids, you can't take the season off, you can't take games no, off, absolutely. especially yeah. at the summer season. Before right. you go to college, there's a tendency to think, well, I don't have to play as much. I can take some time off before I go yeah. to college. I'm, I think I, it's a total opposite. Yeah, I agree. Total I, I, I sort of preach that, that you're not just, once you got commitment, it's not good enough. This is the first step. Right. Then your goal is to try and be in the starting nine. Yeah. Or the starting 10 or 11, 12 that gets played more. Mm -hmm. Rather, you don't want to be player 18 or 19 on a 20, 22 person roster. You want to be player 9, 10, within the yeah. first 9, 10, or 11. Who get you know who got a chance to play more? So I agree. that's why that summer before you're leaving for college is important. Um, once you arrived at college, how was the adjustment to college softball from travel ball in high school? You know, I think in high school and travel ball, especially high school, um, you're kind of uh, a big fish in a little pond. You're the superstar. You know, we had just come off of a high of winning states, and then uh, we went to nationals several times, and so. Yeah. We were always that really hard competitive team, but we always shined. So yeah. I think the huge transi transition was you're not shining anymore. Not necessarily that you're not shining, but your light is not so bright. Um, right. You are a little fish in a big pond now, and uh, people are there that are just as good right. if not better than you and you were the star so it, i think it's a big wake-up call it's a wake-up call um it makes you mature more makes you work harder because you're you're not so great yeah. not that you're not so well, great you're still but, a great player but you're, yeah. you're amongst a lot of great players yeah and that's you're amongst the yeah. best in the country and that's a big stage to step on and that's why i say too that when you go to the space you know w1 school especially I mean, you're going with probably the best three players in every travel team. Yeah. That's going to that same on the same team. Mm -hmm. So you're competing against the best two or three players on every travel team that's graduated onto that team. Yeah. So you will understand that. Now you decide to leave your first school to go to, from mm -hmm. upstate to go to Florida Gulf Coast. I did. And re, part of the reasons for that decision just that you felt more you know um, how you feel about it. You know what I mean? Uh, Upstate gave me great opportunities. Right. Um, that was a great place. They treated you like home and family. I loved it there. The issue for me was definitely the distance. Yeah. Um, I'm mm -hmm. really close with my family, of course you know that. Yes. So being home and just in the state of Florida where it's manageable to come home on a weekend, that's a that was a big decision, a big deciding factor, and um, that was basically kind of what geared me, as well as upstate uh, academically did not have my major right. there either so okay. that was also kind of a deciding factor um and you know that's common i mean i think people don't realize once they make their decision to go out of state or farther away to school that you know being closer to home something that they do miss oh yeah know, and until they experience it yeah you think you can yeah. go and then yeah you realize sometimes you just realize it's not for you um when you went to college had the game changed in any sense uh, besides intensity, more time on the field, gym, faster pace, did it change your approach to playing in college? Oh yeah, um, the game speeds up, especially like you said at the Division One level, it speeds up really quick. Um, like I said, you're with the best in the country, the best of the best, and so the game really accelerates, um, you know, and all your time, you, you put a lot of time and effort um, and hard work into travel ball but in high school but when you wake up and live eat breathe sleep softball because that's what you're there to do ultimately for your first four years mm -hmm. um i think it's an eye-opener i do and I, um i don't think it's what everybody thinks it is right um it's it's a grind it's yeah. definitely a grind it's not all glamour no it's, it's not i mean when they're you're playing on a scholarship in a sense. Uh -huh. you're, it's a job. Oh, yeah. And, paying, and you're expected and you're to paying, paying, complete paying, your job yeah. and at right. your best ability and no sick days and they don't care. Yeah. I mean, you're doing something you love to do. Yeah. But it's still work. Did it become easier to get motivated or was it more difficult in college? Being the, the grind and, and the big schedule with academics as well. Um, was it tougher to get motivated or was it easier because you were playing in college? I want to say it's kind of easier, you know. In the travel ball in high school sense, it's almost, for me and for you as well, it's kind of yourself and your dad are pushing you a lot. Um, yeah. Once you get there, 
everybody is, you know, competing for that those top nine, ten, eleven positions, mm -hmm. and so uh, it's almost easier because we're all there doing the same work all the time. You know, we live together. We're on the field at least four hours a day together. You're in the gym together. You're going to class together. Everything is together, and so you don't not necessarily have you don't have an excuse. Okay, maybe I just don't have to practice today. Um, you're, you're pushed to and not necessarily pushed to, but you, you have to, you right. know? And right. so I think the motivation, it becomes easier. Were you able to successfully combine athletics with academics at the level that's required? Absolutely. Um, I've always kept uh, mostly A's in college as well as high school. Um, I think they push you and motivate you and, you know, you have to, they do what is needed to be done to get you to pass and make you eligible. You have those mandatory study hall hours and stuff like that that really you have no other time to do schoolwork. So while you're there, you might as well do it. Did you find your passion changed at all during the two years you were playing in college? Like, you know, did it waver, waver and did it highs and lows or just were you still all in? Oh, uh, there's definitely highs and lows. Like I said, uh, freshman year, of course, being away from home, mm -hmm. that was a big transition. And so I would definitely say there were times where I, I was like, Mom, Dad, bring me home. Like, I just want to come home. Yeah. Um, but as far as for the love of the game and everything, there's always a, a fiery passion inside. And sure. It, you don't lose it. Um, yeah, there's highs and lows. It's challenged sometimes. Yeah. You don't lose it. You of course. You're the play you don't lose if you're a true of athlete. Of course, yeah. Again, we're here with Kaylee Chappelle, former uh, Division One college player, former Wildfire Pollock 1.0 player, first recruit uh, committed uh, from my Wildfire team. Um, had a great career both in high school and travel ball and had an opportunity to play um, high-level college ball. And So please uh, ask questions, comment, tag, share the video, make sure it's public so we can see it and uh, join us in this conversation. I think it's very eye-opening for those players and parents whose uh, kids are about to enter the recruiting phase or who have been recruited and are about to enter college. Uh, this uh, these questions and answers will provide you with some good eye-opening information. Um, you know, what transformations were you going through as you pondered whether you wanted to continue to play soccer in college? Uh, I think me personally, there wasn't a question. Uh, I was, I was like, you gain through the game right. I think will help me tremendously throughout they have helped me and will continue to help me throughout my whole life I, I think the discipline but yeah. playing also is important as a transfers to academics yeah. and as a student because I think there's a whole different life being a, a student athlete in college versus just being a student definitely <clears throat> those disciplines carry over probably when you don't have any more of course uh, what were the things you enjoyed most about being a uh, college student athlete um the fame, 
I really enjoyed the fame, sure. honestly. Yeah. Um, and you're just respected and put at such a high level and a high expectation, and I enjoyed that. You know, you're expected to make great grades. You're expected to go to practice and perform and go to games and perform. And you're also expected to, like, maintain everything and combine everything. And I, I love the high expectations I think everybody had and that you're held to such a high standard. Right. It makes you push yourself. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, you sort of went from one sorority to another in college sorority. And I say that in the sense that being on a softball team is like being in a sorority. It definitely the girls are your sisters on the team. And, you know, you had that playing softball. But then when you left softball, you joined a sorority in Greek, yeah. in Greek life. Um, are there similar, similarities and differences in the two type of sororities? So I definitely learned um, how similar they are when you're on both sides of it. I got the privilege of being on both sides, like you said. Um, you know, kind of when you're in the student athlete realm of things, student athletes and Greek life don't really mix, um, typically because athletic programs don't usually allow you to do both, be just because right. it's really not realistic to do both. Time-wise. Um, yeah. And so there are, like you said, a lot of similarities. Um, it's a sisterhood for sure. And I think they're both awesome. I enjoyed and I loved getting to have the privilege to be a part of both. Um, I think both of them shaped me as a person and in my college career, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. Yeah. I loved getting to be a part of both of them. Yeah, and the bond you have with obviously, yeah. and it's tight. You'll have a lot of those friendships and relationships for the rest of, of your course. life. Of course. Um, how has playing softball in college and then not playing changed you as a person in your personal growth? Um, I think I still have the. I like to think I still have the disciplines and you know um, the hard work and the drive that I gained from softball that like furthered me into uh, my unathletic, uh, um, you know, regular student life. Right. And so I liked that. Um, they, they still push me today. Uh, yeah. You know, my parents push me to work hard and sure. always uh, don't take the short route. And so I think that, that stuff carries over well into life now keep the same values yeah and true to yourself right um, the parents are gonna I think it's that. so beneficial um, now you graduated from college just recently congratulations thank you four years uh, do you feel softball helped prepare you for the road ahead in life and your future career I definitely do I feel um, comparing myself as far as if I when I wasn't a student athlete these last two years and when I was a student athlete the previous two mm -hmm. um, Looking at life, I can't imagine what life without softball. I think about how hard it would be because you learn so many life lessons and it shapes you to be such a better person and teaches you so many ma uh, values and morals. And so I think, I don't know, I think. Just good life lessons. Yeah. Good life lessons. Being Everything yeah. in softball yeah. teaches you great life lessons. Yeah, I think I think sports is a great uh, you know microcosm to microcosm to life. You know I mean, I think yeah. you, you take those elements of sports, you take them away. That's my next question. Being a competitive athlete as you are, do you feel that's going to help you in your future career? Definitely. I think um, as far as like when you're going to graduate school or you're getting your next job or whatever the case is, I think it's a big factor. It shows that you have great time management skills. It shows that you have great leadership skills. You can work as a team. Um, you, you work hard. You have drive. And so I think employers and grad schools or wherever the path takes people, I think that's a big factor. And I think it's so beneficial to anybody who decides to play any sport. Uh, <clears throat> being part of a team, how will those elements help you in the next phase of your life, being part of a team? I, mean, I think it's, it's like a job. Um, yeah. You know, it teaches you in the real world that you have to work with your teammates, you have to work with your employers, and if you're not working hard, then, you know, it reflects, and it reflects on your team, it reflects on your team as a job, and so yeah. I think those values and life lessons that you learn growing up and being a part of something, you're kind of a part of something that's bigger than you. You know, yeah. you can't slack off because then it reflects your team bad. I think in life your performance is always being evaluated, unless yeah. you're sitting at the top of the mountain, right. company, your own firm, whatever it is. And even then, 
There's a self-evaluation. Yeah. You hold yourself to higher standards. Agreed. So playing softball, always being under the microscope, always being measured on your performance, I think it would not, I would think that would have a Oh, uh, you know, absolutely. This is on what you do in your career. Absolutely. So what are your plans now after you graduate college? So I'll be attending law school in the fall. I haven't decided where I want to go yet, but I'll go to three years of law school and become an attorney. Um, and I'm so excited to see where that journey takes me as well. And I actually used uh, softball in my law school entrance essay. And so it's become, it shaped me into the person I am. And I wouldn't be the person I am today without it, without the sport of softball. And it has given me so much more than I can I can give back to it. Right, I agree. I, I think, like I said, I think it's a great preparation. I think you know the legal field is a very competitive field. Oh yeah. So obviously, going through a very competitive type sport and being a competitive type person should prepare you. Yeah. For the rigors. Absolutely. Of, of law and what it has to offer. Um, what are your greatest memories as a softball player that you'll take with you and share with the future Chappelles? And our ripping audience today <laughs> of the world. Like, what memories are your greatest ones and um, what you're going to miss? You know? I think it's like because my dreams, of course, as a young girl, were to be that big uh, on the big stage, you know, playing televised. And I, so I would say the state championships, all the times we went to nationals. Um, my freshman year, I played in a regional at Auburn. And so I got to be on those big stages. And that's what I miss and I loved the most. And uh, aside from those big stages and the times of fame, I would definitely say when, when we struggle as a team, I liked that. Not that I liked to struggle no. or fail, but um, the way our team especially gelled so well and we came together and um, just those bonding times, I really, really liked. Um, yeah, I mean, you turn the negative into a positive, so yeah. if you're struggling as a team, like, again, I'll repeat this probably for the seventh time on these shows, <laughs> it's not how many times you get knocked down, but how many times you get up and keep Absolutely. moving forward. And when you struggle, people say, oh, it's terrible, it's negative. No, you learn from it. You don't yeah. learn as much when you're always winning. Right. Now, I've been fortunate as a coach, most of my teams pretty much <laughs> won a lot more than they've lost. Yeah. And we've had always traditionally great teams. Our first team is, you know, one of the greatest teams we've, uh, we've ever absolutely. fielded a wildfire in the organization. Uh, I've got a great team now, too, that's right up there with them. But you're right, I mean, when I look back at the players on that team and look where they ended up at college, all, you know, everyone yeah. went to, everyone was a Division One, Division Two type school uh, in that first team, and it was just yeah. amazing to watch the growth in, in the players both on the field and off the field. So and I think it's kind of something you don't really realize until yeah. you take a step back and you grow up, whether you uh, decide not to play or you just get older or you graduate or whatever, you don't realize what and how much the game has given you as a person and as a player until you take those steps back and really look at it and respect it, I, I would say. And, you know, sort of finally, and we may have covered it indirectly with other questions, but if you had to sum it up, what life, finally, what advice would you give, life lessons, to the rip it audience of parents and players who may be watching today or watching after the show, okay. uh, having gone through what you've gone through? I would definitely say, um, Hard work. I can't say it enough. Um, I don't think any coaches can say it enough. It's you get out what you put into it, and uh, if you're not going to work hard, the results are going to show themselves. You can't take the shortcut. You can't skip the line. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen in the softball world. It's not going to happen in the real world. And so I think that's the biggest takeaway and advice I can give is that you can't cut yourself short because that's the only thing you're doing if you're not working hard. You're, you're hurting yourself. I'm not hurting you by working hard. I'm not hurting my teammates because whether I work hard or not, my teammates are going to show themselves and they're going to get themselves committed. And so you got to work hard for yourself and you got to want to do it. You can't be pushed by anybody else. It has to be inside you and work hard. That's it. Work hard. Okay, well, I want to thank Kaylee for joining thank us today you so much. Uh, on, our, on our Rip It Live on Facebook show. We appreciate her insights and commentary, as well as her views about the transition from life of softball, both as a player and as a student, to a life without softball going forward. I have every confidence in Kaylee that you'll be successful in your thank life you. journey and in your legal career. Uh, I, I suppose, as I have the utmost confidence in you uh, when you play for me uh, behind the plate, whether I needed a big hit, I needed to throw to a runner, uh, stealing, or it was to win a tournament championship. Kaylee would always be right there to be counted on to step up and help the team get it done. And that's just the type of person she was when she played for me. And I anticipate that will be the type of person she does when she goes out and helps people 
in, in, in the legal field. Um, my final thought is, on, is in relation to this topic today is softball is a great sport. And it means the world to those who play it or those who have played it, as you can see. And the memories, accomplishments, and rewards for being part of the game will not soon be forgotten. However, it is important for student athletes to understand that the game does not define you, but rather is what you do and what you strive to do the best for the uh, best of your abilities and the best way you can. So, you know, it doesn't define you, but it's something you do, but something you want to do as best you can and with the best effort possible, as Kaylee suggested. So when you transition away from the game, regardless of what that is, as we're all told at some point where we tell ourselves that we can no longer play the game that we love anymore, but that we can still move forward with the same passion in our lives that we dedicate towards the game because the game, because to be successful uh, in the game, you can just be equally successful out of the game. So uh, if you enjoy great success on the field and you have the great values of work ethic, then you can have the same success off the field. So just keep it in perspective. Um, all right, so now it's time for, uh, again, one of our favorite, most popular segments, the Ribbit High School Heroes of the Week. It was another big week in high school softball as the district rounds came to an end and the regional rounds began their play. So Hernando, a 25 and three, shut out Bishop Moore, dropping the record to 18 nine by the score of four to nothing. Ali Shenfield went seven innings and struck out 14 batters for the big win. Apopka took it to Lake Nona, uh, six to one. Apopka moved to 25 and one with the win. Michaela Fisher was three for three. Aubrey Evans was two for four with three runs scored. And uh, Jessiana Moore, was two for four with an RBI and a run scored. Nayabola got the win in the pitching circle, going six innings and striking out six batters. Dr. Phillips with a signature win as a school over West Orange, six to five. Rachel Trockey was two for three with a grand slam, and Gracie Lopez was two for three in the big Dr. Phillips win. Gracie plays for our wildfire team now, and awesome. Rachel played for it last year. Uh, Tim McCreek with a tough, well-fought two-nothing win over Osceola. Lindsay Hendricks pitched a complete game for the win while striking out 10 batters. Eustace kept their great season going as they squeaked out a 1-0 win over Palatka. Marshall commit Delaney Haberlin with a complete game victory along with 12 strikeouts. Crystal River shut out Lake Weir 7-0. Alyssa Hamilton was 3-4 for four with two runs scored for Crystal River. Jane Vickers picked up the win losing, tossing, not losing, tossing a one hitter and striking out eight batters. Mount Dora Academy with a big 12-0 win over Merritt Island Christian. Megan Wright scored four runs from Outdoor, and Ari Miller tossed five shelling innings and struck out 12 batters. Winter Springs stayed undefeated with a big win over Haggerty in a tight 4-3 game. Brianna Driscoll went two for three with two RBIs. Kaylee Mudge was two for two with two runs scored. And Candy Gayton was two for two with two RBIs. Could be Gatton, I apologize, either one. The Newsom Wolves beat Palm Harbor, Palm Harbor University nine to nothing in the 9A region semifinal behind a one hitter, including 12 strikeouts from Mary Beth Feldman. The senior also had three hits. Savannah Barnett led Lake Region to an 8-2 win over Chamberlain. Savannah went the distance, striking out seven batters, as well as going two for four at the plate for the big win for Lake Region. Savannah plays on our team as well. Wildfire Nation, wow. Yeah, we Wildfire Nation, we got some studs. Um, congratulations to Rachel Trockey for winning the 2019 Metro Conference Female Spring Athlete of the Year. Nice job, Rachel. And my final shout out, a major college shout out to my daughter Cindy's team, <laughs> the Detroit Mercy Titans. <laughs> uh, the Titans pulled off a major upset in the Division I Horizon League Conference playoffs. The Titans were ranked seventh in the conference preseason NCAA polls, ended up finishing second in second place during the conference season. But the conference playoffs in the conference playoffs this last past weekend in Chicago, they knocked off the number one ranked team, UIC, twice in the championship round. We know about that, ASA. Yeah. Panama City. I had to beat them twice, but we had to qualify. Yeah, that's Anyways, a tough spot. Anyways, not, not to take this light away from them. But they beat uh, UIC twice in the championship round, championship round to take the conference title, win their conference championship rings, and they will now represent the Horizon Conference and the NCAA Regionals. They were part of the ESPN watch party on Sunday night, and they drew Northwestern, the number 16th ranked team in the country, in the first round of the Evansville Regional. Uh, not only would UIC they beat them twice in the championship, they shut them out twice. Wow. And uh, Liz Murphy, who I'll give a, another shout out to, went 14 shutout innings for That's Detroit awesome. Mercy to, not, to help them win. Um, it was Detroit Mercy's first conference championship since 1992. Woo. So that's like, what, 27 years? My math Sid's is right. 27 years since their last conference cha championship. Congratulations not only to my daughter, Sydney, 
by the Coach Conway and the rest of the Titans, and good luck as they try and continue their Cinderella story to Oklahoma City. And those are your Rip It High School and College Heroes of the Week. And remember, Moms, Rip It has a private Facebook group just for you. Just search Softball Moms Squad, click the link in the comments below. As well, remember to like, comment, and share to promote the growing softball community. Tag a parent or coach and share this video for a chance to win the Rip It $50 gift, gift certificate. We've been, we have been announcing the winner on next week's show right here live on Facebook at 12 noon. So again, until then, thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you again next Wednesday on Rip It live on Facebook.